Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Or if you are new here, my name is Nikki LaRose. I'm a professional makeup artist based in Los Angeles. And if you are new here, this video is gonna be perfect for you because I'm doing a proper q and I get asked a ton of questions when I go live on my YouTube, when I'm on my Instagram, when I'm on my TikTok, also just in general on YouTube. I get a lot of questions and I always feel bad when I answer some people, but then not others. Or if I've answered one question before and then I have a whole new audience of subscribers that doesn't know that I've answered those questions before. Long story short, I want to get to answering your questions that I get asked all the time and have it all in one video. So it's there if you need it or if you're curious about me and who I am as a person, this video is going to be the one. So without further ado, let's get into it because I have a ton of questions to sit down and answer. So we're going to jump right into questions. I have them all on my phone. So let's not waste any time because I have a feeling this video might be really long because I have so many questions, but they're great. They're all great questions. And I'm going to try my best obviously to answer as many as I possibly can, but just a forewarning, I might keep it more personal because this, the whole point of this video is really just so my new subscribers and my old subscribers that don't even, that don't know much about me. It's a chance for you all to just get to know me on a more personal level. I just get to know the person who is bringing you makeup tutorials every single week. Like I said, I have a lot. So let me go through the first page that I have saved. And these are from my Instagram, the first round of these questions. So the first one I want to answer is how did you start doing makeup? That's like a nice straightforward question. And I got this one a lot too. So how did you get started doing makeup was one of the first questions and I kind of fell into it, but it made a lot of sense once I, once it clicked. So if that makes sense, it took a minute for it to click what I wanted to do with my life, to be quite honest. I sounds really cheesy and kind of embarrassing to say out loud, but I really wanted to be in a band growing up. That's all I wanted to do. I wanted to play guitar. I sucked at it, but I wanted to be in a band. I wanted to be like a musician, like in a band and tour. Like that was my big high hopes and dreams. I hated school, so I wasn't going to be a doctor. I wasn't going to be a lawyer. I wasn't going to do any of those things. And I knew that as soon as I was born and able to like form a, a thought of my own. I just knew that I, that's like the core of who I am. I did not like school. So music was an outlet for me and it was just my, the thing that I cared about the most. But once I realized as a young adult that, that was not going to pan out for me and I wasn't going to be able to make that dream a reality, it took me a minute to realize what I could do instead. And I'm happy that I found something that's also in the creative field. You know, music's creative, makeup artistry is very creative, but it's something that took a minute to click in my head. So I started dabbling in makeup and like found like a lot of interest in makeup. And I was always, always passionate about makeup. I would save all my money and just spend it on like drugstore mascaras and eyeliners and colorful chapsticks when I was younger. And so I always had a huge interest in makeup. I've always been so drawn to it, but I didn't start doing makeup and like trying to do makeup until I was 22. And then I realized quickly that unless I like fully committed myself, it really wasn't going to happen. So at 24, I decided I need to make this a little more official just for me. Like personally, I wanted to have something that said that I completed something and just like solidify it, give it more like validity basically. So I went to a small school. It was a really quick turnaround. I went for three months all at night, knocked it out while I was working a day job as a receptionist at a barbershop. I went to night school to do makeup, got certified. And the school is actually called Napoleon Purtis. It's since closed down. It was in Hollywood. But Napoleon Purtis is a famous Australian makeup artist. And I believe he still has his schools open in Australia. That's where he's the biggest. And he also has a makeup brand. I believe they're still in business, but I should probably double check. But anyway, that's where I got certified. And from there on, I really felt like, okay, this is going to be what I'm going to do. It's not like, okay, I'm loosely trying to be a makeup artist. I'm like kind of trying to book jobs and trying to kind of trying to do my friend's makeup. Like from 24 on is when I really like, okay, this is it. I have my heart set on it. I'm going to make this happen. So I've been doing makeup for 15 years. It's been a really long time in the game and it went by really fast, but that is how I got started in makeup. The next one is, do you and Mitch want kids one day? We do. We're just not quite there mentally yet. We work so hard and such long hours that it's just, it's not, it doesn't seem like it's a possibility at this very moment, but do we, the short story or the short answer to that is yes, eventually. Um, I actually got that question a lot. Do you and Mitch want kids one day? Like multiple times I got that question. This next one is where are your rings from? I'm obsessed. 
Thank you so much. And actually I get this question. Oh, I can't even tell you so often. It's one of the most common questions that I get asked. So let's talk about my rings. I'm gonna start with my, my wedding band stack. So a couple stories behind this, they could be kind of boring. So, but bear with me. I, I have to answer this question because I get asked it so often. The love ring is from Tiffany's. This was a gift from Mitch on Valentine's day many, many years ago. He surprised me with it and I've never taken it off. These, there's a lot of story behind these. So this is my official wedding band. It's just an eternity band that we got in the jewelry district in downtown Los Angeles. If you don't know, if you're not familiar, it's a huge district where you buy jewelry, like incredible jewelry. Now these two right here, this one is an eternity band with all black diamonds. And this one is another eternity band. It's all small bees. I don't know if you can tell. Same with this one on the inside. There's really small bees that wrap around the entire ring. Mitch custom designed these himself. They are substantial and heavy rings. They mean the world to me. They're so, so special because he sat there and designed them himself. And at one point Mitch was going to venture down that road and he wanted to be a jewelry designer and he still does. There's still like a huge part of him that is fascinated and so interested and so passionate about it. And me too, like I always wanted to see him succeed in that, but it's not the right time at this time, if that makes sense. He is so swamped with his full-time career. He is an incredibly successful, he's sitting right there behind the camera, just an FYI. So I'm talking about him as he's in the room, but Mitch is a full-time videographer and photographer. So he is knee deep in his field. He is super successful at what he does. I'm so proud of him. Would I love to see him be a successful jewelry maker at some point and jewelry designer? A hundred percent. But at this moment right now, probably not on the cards for us. But let me tell you a little funny story too about this tiny little silver ring that I wear. So this is a funny little story. When Mitch and I actually got married, I didn't have a wedding band yet. I have many now, as you can see, I have a whole stack and I'm so grateful for that. But when we actually got married, we got married in a courthouse far outside of Los Angeles, like 30 miles outside of Los Angeles. And it was just the two of us and it was so special and so amazing. But prior to that, we took my mother out to breakfast to just celebrate and just kind of, you know, have some like intimate time with her before we went off and got married. I made this really big life altering decision together. And at that lunch or at that brunch, my mom gave me a really small box that had um, this ring inside. Now this ring once was gold, but it's since tarnished, but it doesn't matter to me because I'll never take it off because this is actually what ended up being the wedding band that Mitch married me with. So thank you to my mom for giving me that ring because we were so busy at the time, not that we're not now, but we just seemed like we were so swamped when we got married, it was just, it was such an insane time. I remember having like zero free time. Worse, I mean, it felt like busier than it is now, but just in a very different way. But I just didn't have the time or the mental capacity. We didn't have the time or the mental capacity to pick out a wedding band for me. So I don't know what we were thinking, but my mom pretty much saved the day by giving me this random gift that I wasn't even expecting. But I actually had purchased Mitch's wedding band. And so he had a wedding band to, to get married with. And this was the only one that I had at the time. And it's just so special. So does it go with this stack? Absolutely not. But I am the most sentimental person you'll ever meet in life. And I'm also really superstitious. So if this is a ring that I got married with, I will never take it off my finger unless you pry it off of my dead hand. <laughs> now onto this side, I also have a really big gold B ring. I'll insert a, a photo of it so you can just see what I'm talking about because I don't have it on at the moment. It's being cleaned. But this stack right here is another design from my husband, Mitch. He custom designed it. They interlock, they go into each other. There's also a bunch of Bs in this band. And again, I'm so proud of him. He's like endlessly talented. And these rings are just, I mean, they really are like my heart. If anything happened to these, I would just, I would be incredibly devastated. So. That is another design by Mitch. I can't send you guys links for them. And if I ever avoid the question, it's because I probably have answered it so many times. But now you know, if you're new, that's the story behind my rings. And this one's a new addition that my friend, one of my best friends, Brittany, she's also my makeup assistant. She's Brit does makeup on Instagram. You should check her out. But she gave me this LA ring that is just so my style. And this is from The Great Frog. It's a London-based jewelry brand, but they have a store in Los Angeles that she picked it up at. So that's kind of the story behind my rings. Do you plan or hope to become a full-time content creator? Yes and no. I think that I'm really passionate about being a content creator and it's honestly something I never in a million years thought that I would do. I really didn't. And I was told 
and suggested by so many of my colleagues that are content creators, because I have tons that I do makeup on that I have for years and I've watched their success grow immensely by being content creators. And it really is inspiring to see, but they would always suggest like, Nikki, you should do videos. Like, Nikki, you should get on YouTube. Actually, my biggest advocate for joining YouTube back in the day was my friend, Susan Yara, who's huge on YouTube. And she was always pushing me and like my hype girl and telling me like, Nikki, just do it. You have so much to offer. You should share your tips and all your industry secrets and your techniques. So when she would tell me this, I thought to myself, there's no way. Like I would get in my car and like drive home and be like, no, there's no way I could never do it. And I just kept telling myself it wasn't a possibility because I was so busy at work and I still am and it's really hard to juggle, but I just couldn't envision it. I couldn't see myself being able to open up to strangers and being able to put myself on the internet because it's a scary thing and actually still is a scary thing to this day. And I have, I talk about this, but I have good days and I have bad days. I have good days where if I get a nasty comment or, you know, someone, there's always going to be someone that's going to insult you and put you down on the internet. And that's just the way it is. But I have good days where it just rolls off my shoulders and I don't even think about it. But then I have bad days where it hits me at the wrong moment and when I'm in the wrong mindset and, and mental space and I spiral. I totally spiral and I hate to admit it and I hate to give it that power. And then I'm always disappointed in myself for letting it bother me and letting it get the best of me because life is so precious and I don't wanna let anything so like trivial get to me, but I'm human and I don't have the thickest skin on earth. It's pretty thick, but it's not like, rock hard thick, but it's tortilla chips, Mitch says, thank you. But yeah, so do I do I picture myself becoming a full-time content creator? No, I've, I've pictured myself continuing the path that I'm on right now where I, I produce as many videos as I possibly can. But honestly, I will always keep one foot in the door with makeup artistry. I will always keep myself in the game and I always keep myself in that industry because I wanna stay in the know. And as soon as you leave, I think you lose a sense of what's going on in the world with trends and techniques. And I never wanna lose that touch that I have with the industry itself because it's so t closely tied to who I am and like just what my origins are and like who I identify with and who I identify as, as a professional. Like I identify as a pro makeup artist and I always will first. So I hope that answers your question. But do I love my time on YouTube as a content creator? Absolutely. I love it. This next one's a fun one. It's more lighthearted. It's, are we getting a meet and greet in the future? 100%. And to be quite honest, just to let you in on some of the things that I'm working on, what I'm working on a lot of stuff. I'm not gonna lie. But one of the things that I'm working on and really looking forward to getting done is I am in the middle of writing a masterclass. And once I get that launched, I do plan on doing some form of like a tour. It could be a mini tour. I could visit just five cities, 10, whatever I'm lucky enough to be wanted to visit and to do like a touring masterclass, sign me up because I will be there and I will definitely hold meet and greets when I do so. So I'm very, very excited for that. And I'm so looking forward to that in the future because I want to meet you all. This is really cute. And I just have to answer this one because I, I this, this question made me laugh and also put like the biggest smile on my face ever. It's when did you know you want to be a bomb ass makeup artist? That is so sweet. And when I was 22, to be honest, like that's when I was like, this is gonna be my dream. It just makes so much sense. And from there on, it's been my mission. So thank you for that. Okay, so the next two questions are pretty juicy. I got some good questions in here. Like you guys did a great job. I have some really great questions. So the first one I'm gonna answer is, do you regret any of your tattoos? Yes, but only a very small amount, a very, very small amount. Now. I'll say with tattoos, I grew up with the tattoo culture. That's how I grew up. Like my friends were tattoo artists. I won't go into too much detail, but I've been around a lot of tattoo artists in my life, like very, very closely. And I've always had friends that were tattoo artists and I just grew up in that culture, that whole culture of tattoo artists. I lived it and I breathed it and I loved it. I still love it. And I still have some friends that are tattoo artists, like very few that are left, but they're still there. And um, so I feel like, I have a very close tie to like the tattoo culture, like I said, but yes, I do regret some of them. Also, I just wanna say when you start getting tattoos, my opinion, and this might be an unpopular opinion, but in my opinion, I always tell people this when they ask me like, do you think I should get this tattoo? Well, first of all, that's such a personal decision. But what I think personally is when you start getting a lot of tattoos, like I have a lot of tattoos. I don't I couldn't count how many tattoos I have. I have a lot of them and I've been getting them since I was literally actually, I got my first tattoo when I, when I was 22. So 
I started getting tattoos and doing makeup when I was 22 years old. But when you start that young and when you get so many, you're bound to regret some of them. But that's just kind of something that I've accepted. And it's just the reality. It's kind of just just the way the world works. You know, you change, you adapt, you grow up, you mature, your interests change, your passions change, your hobbies change. And therefore, something that you wanted to tattoo on your body when you were 20 years old, once you're like 45, you're probably gonna regret it. But to me, it just kind of comes with the territory, to be quite honest. So I think if you're gonna get a lot of tattoos, you have to be mentally willing to accept that you're not gonna love all of them forever. That's just the reality. And if you do, you're lucky. Mitch says that's actually his favorite tip that I ever give about tattoos. And it's just the most like realistic tip I can give you. Like, it's just realistic. That's just the reality. My sister regrets a bunch of her tattoos and you know, it's just the reality. It's just the way it is. Um, the other juicy question was, how many times have I been married? I've been married once before Mitch. That's about all I'm gonna say about it. But I met my Prince Charming who's sitting right behind this camera and I'm so grateful to have a second chance at being married and being married to the right person because there's no point in getting married unless you're marrying the right person. And sometimes it's hard to find out if that person is the right one. And we're actually coming up on our five year wedding anniversary in October and we were both shocked. It feels like yesterday that we got married. Like literally, he says too. Like it feels like yesterday I was like scouring the internet looking for like a white dress. I found a random one on ASOS for 60 bucks and it just feels like yesterday. It's crazy how fast time goes by, but this is a good one. But this is actually really difficult for me to answer because I'm so passionate about what I do. But the question is, if you weren't a makeup artist, what career path would you also choose? You know, if you asked me in my early twenties, I would have said a musician, obviously, like I just said, I would have said music all the way through and through. But now at the age that I'm at now and just the time that I'm at in my life and with all the jobs and sets that I've been on, all the things that I've experienced just through life, I have to say every time I'm on set and there's a food stylist, like an actual food stylist that is like plating food and cutting strawberries perfectly and doing like glycerin glaze on, on different food to give it like a shine. I look at that job and I'm like, I wanna do what you're doing. Like I would totally be like a food stylist. I would love it. I mean, it sounds so interesting and it's another form of art. Like they are literally artists. I have a friend, Haley, who does food styling and she's incredible. Like she's unbelievable. And I just geek out watching her. She's just fascinating to watch because she's so good and she's so passionate. Oddly enough, I think I would try to be a food stylist. I really do. I know I actually, my my inner food stylist, like my inner wannabe food stylist always comes out like during the holidays or if I'm entertaining. I make really big charcuterie boards with like salamis and cheese and like fancy nuts and like dried fruits. And I spend forever laying it out and making it look really pretty and like Pinterest worthy and I don't know, I, I love it. I, I so thoroughly enjoy it. Okay, so I'm gonna bring it back to me and Mitch because I got a lot of questions asking where me and Mitch met. We met on set and at the time Mitch was doing hair. Mitch was a hairstylist. He was working in a salon, but he was assisting a really big hairstylist that I also worked with for different hair campaigns. One of my clients I've been with for a really long time is a huge hair brand, like huge, huge hair brand. And he was one of the hair assistants that they had on set and so, I met Mitch when he was just a ripe young guy who was doing hair and we would work alongside of each other. Obviously I was the makeup artist on set and he would come around, he would flirt with me and it would make me like super nervous. And I remember thinking, why am I getting so nervous when this young guy, is, cause he's younger than me by like a few years. And I'd be like, why is this young guy making me nervous? Like, this is so not like me, like, you know, whatever. And I would just, I would write him off. I wouldn't talk to him. I would kind of like, you know, I would blow him off, which is so mean. And he just kept trying. He just kept trying to talk to me. He would carry my makeup kit to my car at the end of a long shoe, which I loved because it was super heavy, but he was just a sweetheart. And, you know, even though I would brush him off because of like the fact that he was younger than me and I just couldn't get over that at the time, which is so silly to me now. Like so, so silly. Age does not matter when it comes to like, once you're in your thirties, it just doesn't matter. It's the same thing. Yeah, that's how we met. We met on set working alongside each other. And it still puts a huge smile on my face every time I think about it. Next question, I'm gonna roll, th roll through a couple of like kind of easier ones. How many siblings do you have? I have one older sister. And where are you from originally? I am born and raised in Southern California. I'm kind of a unicorn in a sense, because it seems like if you're in LA, 
you kind of know that it's a lot of people that are from different states. Like it's a lot of people that are from other places. It's kind of hard to find someone who's born and raised in LA and also stayed in LA because a lot of people leave and new people come in. It's kind of like a revolving door in, in Los Angeles. It just, it's kind of just the way it is. But I was born and raised in Glendale, California, which is a small, well, it's not small, but it's a city that's just just outside of Los Angeles. And yeah, that's where I grew up. That's where I was born and raised. What's the hardest part about being a makeup artist? There are a lot. How much time do we have? Because there are a lot. And not to discourage, but just to be t fully transparent because I think that there's a really big misconception that if you're a makeup artist, especially if you're the type of makeup artist that I am, like I work with a lot of celebrities and like private client, like celebrity private clients. And people assume that it's like, nothing but glamorous, like glitz and glamour. And you're, you're in limousines all day and with your feet back and you're just sipping champagne as you're doing makeup. It's not that at all. Like there is a huge misconception when you're, you know, when you're a celebrity makeup artist or if you're a makeup artist that's in Hollywood, it is not the glamorous life that it may be perceived as on the internet. You are seeing one side of what the actual reality is. The reality of being a makeup artist in general, but especially with celebrities too, celebrities have very demanding schedules, very demanding and very random and rough hours. And I had a client even just a few years ago, they would ask me to do her makeup at 2 a.m. because she would go, she had a show to tape that was on the East Coast. So we had to do hair and makeup really early to get her ready for like a 7 a.m. airtime in the East Coast. So it's it's grueling. It's actually, it's physically, mentally, emotionally, it can be emotionally grueling. So, and again, not to be like a negative or anything like that. I'm just trying to be completely real and honest with you, but it's a lot of schlepping. You are carrying extremely heavy bags with you. Believe it or not, once you have like 50 of these in one bag, it becomes incredibly heavy. So multiply that by foundations, your powders, your eyeshadow palettes, your liners, lipsticks, it all weighs, accumulatively, it weighs so much. And you're schlepping constantly and you're schlepping up stairs, flights of stairs. You are lugging things in and out of your car. You're constantly setting up and then going to the next job. It's a lot of work. And you have to have a lot of stamina to make it as a makeup artist in this field. It is just, it's a very demanding job. The other thing about it that can be a little bit difficult is it can test your patience. So what I always suggest is if you are thinking about becoming a makeup artist, you need to have a real conversation with yourself and ask yourself, what level of patience do I really have? Because to be a makeup artist, a good professional makeup artist, it requires a lot of patience. It just does. And it's hard to go into detail of like why you need so much patience, but it just requires a lot of patience. And you're also, you're the sounding board for your clients. So they sit in your chair and you're the therapist. You are the marriage counselor. You are the person that is, you know, talking them out of a bad situation. You're the one that has to hear their problems and to comfort them and to get them in a good headspace and good mindset in order to do their job, which is performing, being on camera and being on. So it's a lot and it takes a lot from you mentally because you give so much to your clients. A good makeup artist will give everything they can to their client. And I do that on a regular basis. And sometimes when I'm, when I'm driving home, I'm mentally spent and that's just the reality. I know that was a long one, but I have a lot to say about, you know, makeup artistry because I've been in the game for so long. So those are just some of the hard parts about being a makeup artist. The other thing that is difficult is you have to have an extreme amount of perseverance. You have to see the light at the end of the tunnel, even if you are so far away from it, you can't even imagine there being a light there because when you just start out in the makeup industry, no one wants to hire you because you don't have experience. Nobody wants to book you because you don't have a celebrity that's under your belt. You don't have a book. You don't have experience. You don't have anything. So nobody wants to hire you. So it is such an uphill battle to get your foot in the ground as a makeup artist, but you have to have perseverance and you have to believe in yourself. As cheesy as that could sound, I don't care. You have to believe in yourself. If you don't believe in yourself, you're not gonna make it. Like you have to wholeheartedly believe in every fiber of your being that you're gonna make it as a makeup artist because it's a mental game too. You're gonna have really challenging days where you think, oh my God, I gotta give up. I have no clients. I'm not getting booked. You know, this person hated their makeup application. I just give up. 
you can't be in that mindset because if you are, you're not going to persevere and you're not going to make it. This industry will beat you down big time. So yeah, perseverance is a big, big thing. And in order to succeed in this game, you have to be willing to just give it your all and never give up. And that's exactly what I did. I never gave up. I just kept on going and kept on pushing and kept on believing in myself. And that's really like one of the biggest tips that I can offer to anyone thinking about getting into being a makeup artist is you have to persevere. Okay, so the next question I actually got asked um, quite a bit, and I get asked this on a regular basis, what my heritage is, like as far as like my, my ethnicity, my background, and I'm a mix, I'm a big mix. I always joke around that I'm a mud because I'm so many things, but the main things that I am is I'm part Hispanic and I'm part German. So those are the, the big center, like main components to what my heritage is. But I'm also English, Scottish, Irish, some random things thrown in there. But my main thing is I am on my dad's side, I have a ton of German. So everyone's German. So mainly German on my dad's side. My mom is half Hispanic. So I, I get a lot of my mom's features, my mom's hair color and all those things from my mom. And um, so yeah, that's that's what I, I mainly am. So I'm just, I'm a mix, but I actually get Italian all the time. And that was one of the questions that I did get is if I am Italian, I'm not Italian, but my husband is. The other question I'm just gonna circle back to jewelry really quick is I got a lot of questions just in general about my jewelry. Like, where do you get your jewelry? Where do you shop for your jewelry? It always looks super cool on you. Thank you so much. But so aside from my rings, which I already talked about, I'm a scavenger hunter when it comes to jewelry. I will buy jewelry anywhere. I look for jewelry, especially when I'm antiquing. I, if I go to an antique store or like any kind of secondhand store, like where there's vintage clothing and things like that, I go to the jewelry section. So like this necklace is vintage. It's from a vintage shop in Palm Springs that I got like last year. But then I also have a couple other things. So I get asked about my evil eye necklaces constantly, constantly. These are not vintage. This evil eye on the top with like a blue diamond, this is actually a gift that I got years ago from my friend, Susan Yara. She gave me this after I did a wedding for her sister-in-law. I did her sister-in-law's makeup for a wedding and she just gifted this because she knew I always wanted one, which was so sweet. And I literally never take this necklace off. It means so much to me. The second evil eye that I get asked about all the time is this diamond one. This was a gift from Mitch. This was my wedding day gift. So Mitch bought me this for a wedding day as the gift and I've never taken this off. It's so, so special to me. So these never leave my neck. They're just very special. So anyway, though, I don't have links to these is what my the point of my story. Um, this one is a gift, just like the top one. I don't have links. If I did, I would promise you, I would try to link them. And I think also going forward, cause I get asked so often, if I do have a piece of jewelry on that I can link, that's easy, that's like, new and definitely has a link out there, I'll start to include it in my description box purely because I get asked so often. So for example, I just got these on Amazon. They were like 11 bucks. They're like a clear knockoff of designer earrings that are really trendy right now. And then I got this necklace. This was actually gifted to me from um, a local jewelry brand that's really beautiful. So they gifted me this. I have an affiliate code for it as well. I'll link this as well in the description but it's a bunch of little crosses with little diamonds. So it definitely fits like my whole stack. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna start linking the things I, I can, but if it's not linked, you're gonna know why. Oh, the other thing I wanna talk about, the last thing, this is actually another bracelet or another piece of jewelry that I never take off my body ever. This is a bracelet that Mitch made me for our wedding anniversary last year. And he designed the whole thing down to the clasp, the shape of the chains, everything about it is custom design from Mitch. So there's no link to this for obvious reasons, but yeah, if you ever wonder about my bracelet, it's quite heavy and it was made by Mitch. So thank you. Okay, the next question I got asked a lot too, and that's how did I meet Susan Yara? Susan and I met when she was producing for um, different companies. She has a production company that she would produce different videos and different shoots for different brands. So extremely successful too. And so when we first met, it was just by chance. I actually got an email from a big company and they were asking me like, it was like a few days prior to the shoot, they reached out and they were like, you know, our makeup artist just canceled. We found you. We really want to book you. Are you available? And I remember thinking I could really use this day off. And I thought, no, it's a new opportunity. Let me just take it. Cause you know what, when you're in the makeup game, you never really want to say no. If you can say yes to things, you got to say yes. So I said yes. And I'm so grateful because it ended up being one of my great clients that I still work with to this day. And I, I love the whole team. Like we're like family. So it worked out so well because on that job, Susan Yara was the producer. So I walked in 
And here is this beautiful, beautiful girl with the most incredible hair, like down to the, her mid back. And I remember looking at her hair and just like being fascinated by how gorgeous it was. It was like this thick, if you put on a pony, it was so thick. And she was like, do that, you know, like she was like producing, like running around. It was a really intense set that day. We were shooting a product and it was just really demanding, but she was just like on it. And it was so impressive to see just a female just running the whole show. Like she was just producing the absolute heck out of this job and out of this shoot. And it was just really impressive. And her and I just clicked. Like I met her, I talked to her for like a few seconds. I was really busy doing makeup for multiple models that day. We followed each other that day on Instagram and I followed her, her other producer, Anna, who's still on the team and who I still see all the time. And we followed each other. We would like, like each other's stuff. And then one day she called me up and was like, hey, I actually have a job that's gonna be in front of the camera. I'm gonna be hosting for basically a shopping a shopping site where they do videos, like online videos where you can buy and, and shop certain products. And she was gonna be the on-camera talent. And she called me, she was like, you're the first person I thought of. Can you come and do my makeup and my hair? I was like, count me in. And then her and I have been like this ever since. We've done so many jobs. We've traveled the world together, literally. We're like sisters. We go way back, way, way back. So one of my friends that I've met online, been fortunate to meet online and in person, her name is Mademoiselle Lou on Instagram. We actually have met multiple times in Every time I go to London, I meet her and she comes to events and I get to talk to her and it's just, it's so great to like give her a hug in person. So she asked, if not in LA, where else would you live? Italy. We both say Italy, 100%. It's like a dream. It's a dream to move to Italy, retire, maybe open up a little sandwich shop, sandwich wine and cheese, make some like espresso drinks, like just open like a cute little cafe and you know, maybe call it like the Banaldi's or something cute. And that's our dream. So if we didn't live in LA, we would be in probably Lake Como or Rome for sure. Great question, Lou. How do you balance your career and YouTube career? That's a great question. I ask myself this constantly. I have no idea. Some days I do really well at juggling and other days I fail pretty miserably and I'm in a bad mood. I'm stressed a lot, to be honest. It's really hard to juggle these two jobs because they're both full-time. Like they really are full-time and you wouldn't imagine it, but cause you just see like a 30 to 40 minute video on YouTube, but the back end work that goes into YouTube and we're not complaining, we're, we love it. We're so passionate about it, but it involves a ton of work on the back end and it takes up a lot of my, it takes up all my free time. So I really, I average like a half a day off a week to be fully transparent. Like we average half a day off a week. Yeah, so how do I juggle it or how do I balance it? Not no well, it. huh? No yeah, there's just no balance. Like Mitch says, we don't have balance at all. And our friends are mad at us. <laughs> our family is mad at us cause they don't see us, but it just, it's the reality for us right now. And you know, we're grateful. Life is still good. We just don't have a lot of balance. I get asked this random question a lot. What was my first tattoo? My first tattoo was my last name, La Rose, in cursive writing all down my ribs. <laughs> Very popular at the time that I got it. Like it was such a like, like tattoo that guys would get. It was like such a popular guy tattoo. When I, I remember when I got my tattoo appointment, all the guys in the shop were like, you sure you want this there? Like, it's really gonna hurt. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, go big or go home. Here's a cute little simple question. Where do you get your tops from? I love all the black tops. All black shades are different. I agree with you so much. I get asked this question a lot about like clothing in general, but obviously you only see me on YouTube pretty much or just on social media and you can only see me from like the waist up. So most of my tops, to be quite honest, if I had to think about it, most of my tops are from Zara. I don't spend a lot of money on my like cotton tops, my cotton tank tops. I do get H&M tank tops a lot because they're really comfy and like, easy and they, they actually last me a really long time, which is great but I don't spend money on my tops. I'm like a big believer in, I spend money on my shoes, my pants and my jackets. Like that's what I spend money on. Even like bags, like I'll buy, I rarely buy bags to be honest. Like it's pretty, I have vintage ones I love and I adore, I, lo I love vintage bags. Like that's like a thing that I'm passionate about, but I don't spend like, I don't just buy like random bags and like tons of tops. I really keep my tops simple for YouTube, especially it's just easier. And it's also just easier for my day-to-day -day life to just have a simple top on and then, what I do spend my money on and invest in is like my pants, like I said, and my jackets and my shoes. So most of my tops that you see me in, I'd say like 80% of them are from Zara. The next question is, what are your main hobbies? What type of music and movies do you like? I am like an old soul. I love old movies. 
like all the way, like 80s, 90s is like, 90s is probably like the newest, maybe early 2000s is like the newest genre of movies that I like really get into. I love, if I have the chance of watching a new movie in theaters or watching an old classic movie, I'm gonna pick an old classic movie any day. Same exact thing goes for music. I don't like a lot of modern music. I'm sorry, I know, I'm like a grandma. I like classic rock and oldies and I love like old soul, like old soul music is probably one of my favorite types of music to listen to, especially like when I just wanna like mellow out and get my head in a good place. Like that's the kind of stuff I listen to. And also like 90s, like alternative rock, like I'm all about like third eye blind on the day on a day off. Like I just don't listen to a lot of new music at all. Like it's really rare for me to find a new artist that I get into that I wanna listen to. So a lot of old music, lots of classic rock. Like my favorite band in life is Led Zeppelin. I have like their Led Zeppelin symbols on my arm. It's a really old tattoo, so don't judge it. But yeah, I'm really into music, but old music, like old classic rock, old punk rock, things like that. Four on the floor, Mitch says. Four on the floor. Leave me a comment and let me know what four, if you know what four on the floor means. I'm laughing so hard if you do because Mitch is always complaining about how I'll put four on the floor music on. It's hard to explain. Okay, I actually got asked a lot if I do self tanner. I don't do self tanner. The, the, like my arms, like this is what I wake up to every day. I don't have any form of self tanner on my body at all. Like I have a little bit of shimmer from like a highlighter if you're picking that up, but this is my skin tone. And this is why I always talk about how it's so important for me to match my foundation to the rest of my body and not the opposite. So if I just match my foundation to my face skin tone, I would look like I am Casper up top and completely different on the bottom. So it just would be, it wouldn't be a, a good match. So I'm all about evening out from face to this area. And that's like, that's where you're gonna get the best match anyway. So you wanna look at the, the complete picture. Look at the whole picture. Don't just look at from here up because that's not gonna be accurate. Like. Our hands are different colors. Our necks are usually different colors. Our chest, you wanna be one cohesive color all over and throughout. So, but anyway, back to the original question. Do I use self tanner all over? No. In the summertime, my legs get a little pasty sometimes like, cause they don't see the sun very often. So I'll do like a self tanner from Tan Lux. There's one that I, I like for my legs. It's like a gradual, natural self tanner. Just gives my legs like a little, little boost of color to even it out with the rest of my body, but pretty much no, I do not use self tanner only in like those specific instances and those specific spots like my legs. So I actually got this question a lot and that's basically why do I hold my makeup brushes the way I do? So I got that question reiterated in, in, in different ways on Instagram and on YouTube. So I got it a lot and let me show you what I'm talking about in case you don't know. I hold my makeup brushes between these two fingers. I hold everything between these two fingers, my pencil, my pen, if I'm writing, my forks, my chopsticks, like you name it, I hold everything between these fingers. And if I had to figure out or get to the bottom of why I do this, my the reason I always think of off the top of my head that makes the most sense to me is because I was homeschooled. Let me give you more detail behind this. So I was homeschooled my whole life, through and through homeschooled. And I never had anyone telling me that this was not the proper way to hold my pen, like when I was doing my homework. So because it was never corrected, I just can't change it. Like I, it's just so, I could never hold anything like this. It would look like chicken scratch. Like I would never be able to properly write, do makeup. There's just no way. It, it feels so bizarre to hold things between these fingers, which is the actual appropriate way to hold, you know, that we're taught to hold your pen, like anything, right? Your fork, knife, all that. I can't do it. That is probably the most straightforward answer I could give you about why I hold my, my makeup brushes between these fingers is because I can't do it any other way. It's just how I grew up holding everything. I'm so stuck in it. I could never change it in my adult life. I kind of blame it on homeschooling, not in a bad way, but just because I didn't have a teacher like right in front of me every single day telling me that I'm doing it the wrong way. So hope that answers your question. Did I always have clear skin or did you just finally find a regimen that works for you? Your skin is distractingly clear, flawless, stunning. Thank you so much. That is so sweet of you. I appreciate that compliment so much. I think I'm gonna be really real. I think it's a lot of it's genetics. My mom has really beautiful skin and she just always has, like she's always had very clear, very glowy, very, very oily. She's always been a very oily skin person. And I think that's actually helped her maintain like a smooth skin throughout her life. She's got like very smooth, just very glowy skin. And I, I think it's genetic. So just to be really real, I think it's a genetic thing. I, I totally get it from my mom. Thank you so much to my mom for that. But I did have a period in, in time where when I was like 
maybe like 16, 17, or no, it was like 15, 16, 17, that I did start to break out like on my cheeks. Totally normal for a teenager. My mom got me proactive. And honestly, I'm not gonna lie, that changed my skin. It like knocked out any pimples I was getting completely obliterated them and it was gone. And it just worked so well for me. This next one is from Carla and Carla had some, a lot of really good questions all wrapped in one. And they're really cute too. Like she was asking me if I slept with my fur babies. We did at first, we did have them in the bed, but one of them conveniently liked to jump off the bed at like two, three in the morning and pee on our rug. So we had to get rid of that rug. So now he does not sleep in bed with us, but he sleeps really cozy and tucked in with his brother and his crate with a bunch of warm blankies and they're super happy about it. They, they love it. So that answers one of the questions. And then another part of this question was, would you consider doing more fashion post in the future? And definitely, um, it just sounds fun to me. It sounds fun to like kind of mix it up and I wouldn't have even considered it if I didn't get asked so much about like my clothes and my tops and my jewelry. But since I get asked so often, it sounds like there's like, you know, people are interested in it. So it sounds like fun to me. I'll, I'll definitely start to maybe incorporate like just linking my tops if I can in my YouTube videos, if it's just as simple as that. I do plan on like sprinkling in a little bit of fashion whenever I can or whenever it feels like natural to do so. Just a quick one too, this is from Jane Yoon. She says, so I'm from Korea and we're on the opposite side of the planet. We don't know each other in person, but I can feel your warm heart and good soul simply by looking at you through my laptop. That is the sweetest thing I've ever read in my entire life. And actually I spent a month, an entire month in South Korea when I worked my first job with the Olympics, when the Olympics, the Winter Olympics were in South Korea, which was actually five years ago. I can't believe I'm saying that it was five years ago. Or was it six years ago? Six years ago, I spent uh, an entire month in South Korea working a lot. It was really cold. It was in the dead of winter in February, but I would love to go back someday. And if I ever do, I will make sure I message you and we'll have a meet and greet. I would love to say hi to you. Nancy asked, you know, I think the word of you, Nikki. My question is, how did you get to be so sweet? I'll bet your mom is too. I never had a daughter. So do you think your mom can share you with me? That's so sweet. Nancy, big hug, sending you a big hug. You know, I appreciate your following and your support so, so much. And I'm sure my mom would not mind. This is a really good question. This is from Caitlin. After a really long, hard day, what do you do for yourself to recoup and make yourself feel better? To be quite honest, the main thing I'll do is I'll either go on a walk, like that's something I've done for years and years and years, like years, like since before, like Mitch, before anything, I'll go on like a little walk by myself or with dogs. If I had dogs at the time, I've had many dogs in my life just to like, you know, reground. And I mean, it sounds so cheesy, but to like be around nature, there's nothing like it. It's so therapeutic. But the other thing, and the main thing I do to be quite honest is I'll zone out with music. Like on my drive home, I usually hit a ton of traffic. I'm in LA. So there's just traffic everywhere you turn and just like the reality of living in Los Angeles. So to get home from LA traffic or in LA traffic is just, it can be really rough. So I spend a lot of time in my car, but after a long, grueling day, I'll put on some music that puts me in a good mood and I'll just let my mind wander. That's like the best way for me to recoup, to be honest. That's like the main thing. That and like snuggling Mitch on the couch, to be honest. Okay, so I think we're rounding out to some of the last questions, but this is a really good one. Okay, so Amanda asks, my question is how much money do you spend a month on makeup? So every month, what do you spend on makeup? I've been trying to buy products you and a few other YouTubers recommend and have spent almost 1000 this year at Ulta alone. I have a bunch of products I need to use before I buy more. I hear you, trust me. Also, I've been thinking about starting my YouTube channel, but not makeup. Me and my husband work together doing construction, interior remodeling. Oh, this is right up my alley. I would totally subscribe so quick. And I want to show the process of remodeling. This is, you're speaking to me and Mitch right now. Let me tell you why in a second. But but she says, what advice would you give me before I start? I'm scared to flop. I'm scared of the comment section. Any advice? You can't be afraid of it. I think that's the best advice. You just can't get in your head. You're like, get out of your head. If you're you feel passionate about it and you feel drawn to doing it, first of all, me and Mitch will subscribe so quick to you. I promise you that. Like we're all about house flipping. We love construction. We love remodels. We're so into it, but you just have to start. You just have to believe in yourself. Like I said, as cheesy as it sounds, you have to believe in yourself. You have to make a commitment. You have to stick to it. You're gonna get some bad comments here and there. It's just the reality. Some people can be really horrible online and it's, it's shocking. It can be really disheartening for sure. But if you think about it this way, and this is what always helps me. So if you're afraid of bad comments, like mean comments, don't be, because here is the reality behind bad comments and I full, heartedly believe this is people 
that are hurt hurt other people. It's a way for them to just feel better about themselves. So if you just kind of take a step back and you try not to be too insulted by mean comments, and this is hard. It's something I practice all the time. Like I said, I have good days and bad days. But if you kind of just check yourself and you realize that people that are really happy in their lives and happy with themselves, they're not the people that are going to go online and insult you and put down your looks or whatever they're going to put down. That's just the reality. So if you can just remember that going into it, it's going to help you out immensely. I promise you. But don't be scared. You know, what's the worst that could happen? Your views are going to be slow at first. You just have to keep going and, and keep pushing and keep believing in yourself. And I promise you, like, if you believe in yourself, you're going to be able to do it 100%. Oh, this is cute. This is actually a really cute one. Someone's asking, Nikki, which is your top love language out of the five love languages? Affection. Physical touch and, like, affection. If you don't hug me, I don't feel loved. <laughs> but we'll move on from that. <laughs> we'll move on. But me, like, for me to feel, like, show people that I love them, I love to give gifts. I'm a big gift giver. I love buying gifts. Like, love it. I would, any excuse to buy someone a gift, I'm there. But actually, it's not my love language in return. I don't like to receive. I have a really hard time receiving gifts. I love them. Like, I get them all the time, but I, I have a hard time accepting them. Like, it's a really hard thing for me to accept. Jeannie's asking, please ask Mitch, what is his favorite aspect of you? Also ask him what his favorite lipstick color is on you. My husband loves a good red. Shout out to your husband because he's a rare breed. Most men, in my experience, don't like red lipstick. And that's that's really cool. So you got it. That's, that's awesome. I'm props to him for liking red lipstick. Mitch loves any lipstick that looks like concealer on my lips. He likes my lips to look super nude, powdery, very, very matte. Like not, he's not a gloss fan at all. He likes super duper matte, right? He likes light pink. What else? Light peach, peach colors, light nudes. That's Mitch's Mitch's thing. But what's your favorite aspect of me? Favorite aspect of you? Mm -hmm. I mean, that sounds cheesy, I guess, but like, I don't know if I could pick one. I obviously can't just pick one, but let's say the top ones that come to mind are I'm very- <laughs> Sweating over this question. with you because you're incredibly talented and mature. That's you know, sweet. You really have your life together. You know, you're mm -hmm. so self-assured. You're not uh, insecure. You have a, uh, you're a Sour Patch Kid, you know? I, he says I'm a Sour Patch Kid, in yeah. case you missed that. I'm a Sour Patch Kid. Yeah. Why is that? Because <laughs> you're a little bit tough on the outside. I am tough on the outside, but sweet on the inside. Yeah. I am a Sour Patch Kid. I really am. I'm a Capricorn also, just in case anyone, no one asked me that question, oddly enough. Maybe it's a silly question, but I'm a Capricorn. And I really am a Capricorn to a T. Like if you look up the traits of a Capricorn, I am the poster child of being a Capricorn. Like I am so wholeheartedly a Capricorn. Okay, we're gonna, we're nearing the end of this q and I've had so much fun. I hope this has been fun for you all and entertaining at least in some way. And just, you know, it's good to like, like I said, like get to know me in a more personal way. And one of the questions I got also was, do I have any hobbies outside of, you know, YouTube and being a makeup artist? I don't have a ton of hobbies, more as I have like passions and things that I love. Like I love classic cars. Me and Mitch both have old classic cars from the 60s. We're obsessed with old cars. I'm obsessed with old cars. Like if I had it my way, I would have an entire driveway filled with old classic cars. It's been one of my passions since I can remember, like since I was like maybe like 10, 12. I've always been into classic cars. They're like just, they're just amazing. They're, they're more interesting to me than like anything else. I'm obsessed with them. So that's something that we mutually share. We can, we'll go to car shows if there's some around, like they, they happen a lot during the summer, especially in like spring. So we love to go to car shows together and like just geek out over the classic cars. The other thing I love to do, speaking of old things, I love to go antiquing. I'm a huge antiquer. I could antique all day long if you let me. If I am let into an antique store that has like furniture, like tchotchkes and like different things like vases and chandeliers, I'll be there forever. I'll be there for hours and hours and hours. I could look at antiques and go to antique stores all day long. That's like one of my, <laughs> makes me so happy, it's ridiculous. So so yeah, that's a whole lot of information about me. I'm a little tired of talking about myself at this point. So I hope you all enjoyed this. I really hope you found it just fun and interactive and just a great chance to get to know me. So if you're a new subscriber, I just wanna welcome you properly. Thank you for subscribing to my channel. I'm so appreciative to have you and to my old subscribers that have been with me since the beginning for the almost two years now. I am so appreciative of you and all the support and the love that you guys show me constantly on my channel. I mean, it really means like the world to me. So it makes it all worth the sacrificing and just the time and energy spent into making YouTube content. It just, it's so rewarding when I have an incredible audience like you all. So. 
I really mean that from the bottom of my heart and I really just appreciate you all so, so much. Again, thank you for watching this video. Let me know what your favorite part was. Let me know if you learned something about me that you had no idea. Um, hopefully you found it entertaining. I'll see you in my makeup videos. You can check them out right here. I have tons of them and I'll see you all soon. Bye.